This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about the new Trapcode Tile plugin in the new Trapcode Suite 13 release. This is a new plugin from Trapcode that I've been beta testing for quite some time now. It's finally out and it's very interesting. I wanna give you guys a first look at what Trapcode Tile is and why you would wanna use it in your productions and your motion graphics here. So this is kind of what Trapcode Tau looks like and kind of create similar designs. I'm sure you've seen stuff similar on Twitter from the trap code uh, Twitter site as well as my own. But basically it's kind of like a hybrid between trap code mirror and trap code 3D stroke. Basically you're creating geometry like trap code mirror, but you're mapping it to strokes and paths kind of like a 3D stroke here. And you have very similar controls as you'll see. It's a very, very fast plugin such as trap code mirror. You can create some very interesting uh, dynamic 3D animations like this and motion along paths like uh, 3D strokes. Let's go ahead and hop right in and take a look at this. As you can see, it's very, very cool. You get some nice reflections, gloss, lighting, uh, renders fairly fast. You get some pretty interesting uh, materials going on and uh, animation repeater uh, options here. So let's go ahead and create a new composition. And we'll just call this uh, Tau Demo. And uh, you know, just copy the background that I have in the previous example here. It's just a white background. And uh, we'll call it BG. And we'll create another new solid for the Tau plugin. So we'll just call this Tau. And uh, we'll make it black. And we'll apply effect, trap code, and apply the plugin here. So by default, we have a path generator. And basically what this does is it creates a kind of a default path for you. So it can generate a circle, a line, and a fractal. And of course you have the respective options for these predefined generated paths here. So you can increase the size and such like that, uh, you know, rotate it and you can control like the length of the fractal geometry, the complexities of it, the evolution of the fractal um, and evolution and such like that. You can also taper stuff like this and you have the gridify option, which will kind of force your geometry to kind of like a 3D grid formation here. So as you can see here, um, you know, the, the path generator is kind of there just to kind of get you started if you want to create some basic stuff like circles and stuff like that. Um, but the real power comes in when you want to create your own custom path. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck generate path. We don't want to re pre generate a path here. We want to create our own. And uh, so the best way to do that is to actually just get your pen tool and just make sure that your layer is selected and just draw a simple path here. So as you can see, as we draw the path, it automatically generates the 3D geometry fairly quickly and uh, you know pretty accurately here. So I just drew a random Bezier path. And once we draw the path, we can go into the paths from mask options. You can also create paths from lights in case that, uh, you know, that's more convenient for you for what you're doing in your projects. But in the options, we have options to enable the use of all the masks or just certain individual masks. Um, we also have the ability to rotate this as the previous uh, path generator options. You can rotate it. Uh, you can taper the size like this. You can define where the taper starts, where it ends, the midpoint, all that stuff. Um, pretty, pretty basic stuff. The fun really comes in when you go down into these segments right here. So right now it just kind of extrudes the path and you have a basic geometry. I'm going to go ahead and create a new camera just to kind of show you how fast this is. And you can just easily just rotate around it. As you can see, it renders fairly quickly, just like mirror. So here we have the basic extrude end gons. We can actually repeat the end gons like this. So you can kind of repeat the uh, end gons like this, kind of create this kind of segment path here, or you can repeat the sphere of it. So you can create spherical uh, segments here. We can actually increase the segments, kind of create something like this. You can also uh, define the number of sides for the geometry. I'm going to select the repeat end gons because I think it looks pretty cool. We'll increase the number of segments and we'll also increase the number of size to maybe six, like a hexagon or some sort, maybe uh, maybe four. And we can break the sides. We can also enable caps, which is very nice. Let me just lower down the segments a little bit and adjust the camera. So we can actually enable caps which will give it a nice little edge. We can also increase the size of everything. So I'm gonna go into adjust it like this. And uh, you know, we can change the size of X, Y, Z, pretty basic stuff here. These are pretty much basic geometry parameters here, 
basic manipulation stuff. The really cool stuff here is you can actually rotate and twist things. So we can rotate and twist this whole, this whole mechanism here to get these nice tapered twists. Um, we can rotate it. You can rotate the individual polygons or the whole thing in the transform. We have the option to tessellate in triangles or quads in case that's important to you uh, for what kind of modeling you're doing, um, stuff like that. We can do stuff like randomize the scale of the individual geometries here to give some randomness. You can, you know, randomize the rotation, the position, all that good stuff to add more flexibility and, you know, dynamic to your animations. You also have random seeds. For the offset, you can actually offset the size, the texture, the position, rotation, and looping. I won't be showing looping in this video, but um, it's pretty easy to do in a future tutorial. So you have stuff like offset, which can easily offset the whole animation paths very quickly with a single slider here. So there's no advanced keyframe. You can just animate from one point to the next using this offset slider, similar to shape layers. So this is what I kind of want to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and keyframe the uh, offset here at the beginning. And we'll move to the end here and we'll just zoom it through. So not only can you offset the sides, you can offset the position, which will actually move this thing through, which looks fairly cool. So before we move into the cool stuff, I just want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one place to create an online website for your online business store or portfolio. They have awesome templates to choose from, an easy to use page builder that allows you to use the website and build your website the way you want it without having to know any code at all. They have awesome 24 hour support and starting at just $8 a month, you can get your website up and running right now and get a free domain name for a year. Best of all, if you use the promo code dojo at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order right now. So check it out, squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. We can actually go into the repeat path and actually clone the path. So we can go and go to the first repeater. It will make, let's say four repeaters. We can actually offset them. Actually, we'll make it two, maybe two. And it will actually rotate it in, let's just say in Z like this. We can rotate it in Y to kind of add this crazy mechanism going on. We can rotate it in X and just kind of create a a system of chaos. As you can see, it all animates very quickly. I'm on full res here. I can just scrub through it and see everything in pretty much real time without any delay. And of course, we can rotate it around and see what the heck we're doing here. Looks pretty cool. And of course, in the repeater, you have options to, of course, randomize the size, um, you know, randomize the position, and all that stuff. We have a second repeater, which can actually replicate this whole thing and, you know, make duplicates of this which would be very interesting for, you know, dynamic, systematic stuff. Think of it kind of like a MoGraph repeater or a cloner object. So pretty cool. The fractal displacement is similar to the fractal displacement in pretty much any other plugin. Essentially, you can manipulate and distort the paths using a fractal displacement. So we can increase the amplitude that will kind of just distort everything to make it look a little bit more organic. And then we can increase the frequency to kind of make it smaller, kind of get this intricate thing going on. You have the evolution, which will animate the distortion, you know, fairly simple in trap code form in particular and stuff like that. Um, here is where it kind of seems like mirror. You have the same material kind of options. Um, so for this to work, I'm going to go ahead and create a basic light. We'll call it light one. Hit OK. And as you can see, it reacts to light, just like trap code mirror. We'll put it in an interesting place here. Maybe, uh, maybe down here or so, and we'll just push it back like that. So we can kind of see the material options here. Um, so you have basic stuff in mirror, like the diffuse, the specular, the metal. Um, you know, we can increase the Fresnel a little bit. Uh, we can use the smooth or inverse distance squared kind of light fall off. Um, we'll give you more realistic results with the light fall off here. Something like this, we'll just pull this up. Maybe we'll duplicate another light. For this light, we'll just push it back a little bit and kind of illuminate the top. Something like that. Um, so we'll go back into Tau and we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these settings. We can actually play around with the light radius, which will determine where the fall off begins. Somewhere right there. 
uh, we can actually use image based lighting. So you can actually use HDRs and built in environments to actually, you know, create reflections and stuff like that and lighting. So pretty much using HDRIs to light your scene, similar to what you would do in Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. You have some built in ones that are kind of, you know, kind of OK for what you need to do, uh, similar to the uh, Element 3D HDRIs included. I'm kind of a fan of the dark industrial one which will kind of give you some nice reflections and stuff like that. And you can, you know, rotate the environment and similar stuff, similar to Element 3D and stuff like that. So textures, I'll skip over. World Transform is basically ro rotating the whole system here. So you can just rotate in Z if you wanted to, uh, stuff like that. In the visibility option, you have stuff like fog. I don't use fog that much when it comes to this plugin. In the rendering options, you have pretty much mirror options. You can have the flat shader, you have the density shader. And then you have the smooth shader. Um, you also have the similar draw options, wireframes to render wireframes, uh, you know, points. I'm a huge fan of the, the hybrids. So the front fill, back wire, stuff like that. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of these. Uh, we can actually increase the line size a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on and kind of just create that nice uh, kind of a cartoon drawing look wireframe look kind of like a like a 3d game or something like that and of course you have uh you know blend and depth mode add mode pretty simple stuff uh keep that off usually uh, you have second pass which is you can actually enable wireframe by default over your existing uh, geometry which is pretty cool and handy and of course you have ambient occlusion for some reason whenever i use ambient occlusion i just get some you know, nasty bandings, even if I increase the multi sampling, uh, you know, super sampling and segment geometry and stuff like that, you can get some pretty interesting results here. So if I increase the intensity, you can kind of see what it's doing. It's kind of creating this inner shading shadow. It really gives the plugin a whole new look for the geometry. And of course, you can play with the radius of it, how how deep it is and stuff like that and stuff like that. Multi sampling, I always get to bump it up. The settings are pretty low in this plugin by default. Super sampling, you have up to 64 times, which again renders fairly quickly, even at high super sampling rates. So for example, 16, I can just move around a full res, still pretty much real time, it looks pretty cool. And uh, that's pretty much it for this plugin. Uh, Tau is a very, very interesting plugin. Again, it's probably the most complex plugin out of the whole trap code suite, so by far. It takes the complexity of Mir, but the power of Mir, and mixes it in with trap code, uh, 3D stroke to kind of give you that flexibility of animation because honestly, uh, you know, mirror was great for more static stuff. You can animate the fractals and displacement and stuff like that, but you know, you just can't really tell mirror where to go. And with this plugin, it makes it a lot easier to kind of define your path and actually animate it and create some pretty interesting animations here. Um, most of the animations so far have been more abstract, but that's because it's been in the beta for, you know, for a limited amount of users. Uh, but with now that's out in the public, you can actually see some pretty interesting stuff and I can't wait to see what you guys can create with this plugin. So if you create anything cool with this plugin, let me know in the comments down below. But this has just been a really quick kind of introduction to the plugin here and what it does and uh, kind of like the power of it. So just think of it like a mirror on steroids with options from 3D strokes. So that's pretty much for this tutorial, guys. My name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.